Behind every project's success or failure, there's a tale of self-reflection, growth, and discovery. I want to take a journey with you as we dive deeper so you can understand more about projects and which you can, which you can become in understanding oneself through them. I go by the name of ED for all you smart and intelligent folks out there. Listen, that just simply means it. Today's episode is entitled Unveiling Behind the Scenes, a project manager's quest to self-discovery. Again, unveiling behind the scenes, a project manager's quest to self-discovery. You mind if I share a story with you? One of the things I realized on, on this journey, on this thing that I hope that you'll fall in love, that I fell in love with called project management, is that we have to be stoic. What does that mean, E.D.? Being stoic meaning that sometimes we just can't take everything personally or personal. We also have to understand our time management aspects of things because if we don't, we can get distracted by people or things that don't have our best interests. Here's some examples of the distractions that come along the way, family. Sometimes you can be in a meeting and you can get a ping in Slack or Teams or whatever the chat uh, features or chat that is, that is used for your organization and you get distracted from the main thing. I love what Zig Ziglar talked about. He talks about you know, wherever you are at, be present. And sometimes we have a capability, especially as project managers, that we'll be all over the place. Gary Keller even talks about in the book one thing that there's no such thing as multitasking. At first, I disagreed with him. But now I have to come to agree because I learned when I did focus on one thing and then focus on the next thing and just move from box to box, I was more effective than I was when I was spread thin and trying to do everything and be everything to everybody and I was forgetting about the main thing. That's why it reminds me and it makes me recall about how when you're on the airplane, the, air, the stewardess never tells you when the air mask, I mean, when the, when the uh, mask comes down, hey, stop what you're doing and take the mask and put it on your neighbor or your neighbor's neighbor. It says, no, put it on yourself first. And as project managers, we have a tendency to want to put it on our stakeholders first before we put it on ourselves. Because see, if we help ourselves first, we can help everyone else. And I have a video about that. And it's not more about being selfish. It's about finding a balance between the two of being selfless and selfish. But people sometimes identify of you first taking care of you as selfish. And I, again, disagree with them. So I'm going to take you on this journey, family, as when we talk about the eight points and we're going to unpack these eight points of, of how... Um, I want to give you some behind the scenes of things. And this is going to be very transparent, family. I know there's a, videos out there that, you know, you can be a project manager in 72 hours or you can be a project manager in six hours if you watch this video. Well, that will, that's something you won't get here, family. I'm, I apologize, but I don't apologize because there, there, there's rules to this game as well as there's levels to this game. And if you skip a level, I shared a story. I, you know, I'm 6'5", and you know, I have a tendency, like how most people will walk upstairs, I like to run and, and skip the stairs until that fatal day where I ran and skipped about two or three stairs. And I think you can imagine what happened from there. But if you can't, I will use the imagination with you. Well, my face, seeing everything that was in the carpet and more. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't break anything, but it was enough to make me realize that when you skip a step or you take a shortcut, this is the result from it. Okay, you didn't like that one. Okay, how about this one? Family, listen. Yes, you can be a project manager with no experience. Yes, you could be a project manager in 72 hours or less. Yes, you can skip, you can go to a boot camp and you can be a project manager right away and be, get your PMP, CAPM, ACP, all of these things. But if you're in this for a career, if you're in this for growth, if you're in this for becoming more than what you were, at least 1% better than you were yesterday, then this video is for you. If not, then, hey, I respect you. Salute. I wish you well. There's a lot of content out there that won't give you this guidance. They will tell you 
probably the exact opposite. It's the shiny syndrome type atmosphere, but I want to unpack it. I want to be realistic because that's how you started rocking with me in the first place because I kept it all the way 100 as they would say. So let's get into this thing here. The eight points failures. Point number one, failures, the unsung teachers, man, I tell you. See, failures or I'll call setbacks have really been set ups for me, you know, because see what I was able to do from these failures or I call them the, the learning lessons, these teachers, sometimes they don't come in a manual. They don't come in a book that show you that, hey, if you make this particular decision, then this is the outcome that you're going to get. So these actual setbacks, were opportunities for me for actual growth. They also gave me the opportunity to be able to uh, uh, watch this, break the learning curves that I would have in certain situations because all projects are not the same. I don't care what anyone tells you. They'll say, yeah, every project is the same. Now, there's a difference. Now, if you're working maybe a certification project or uh, maybe you may be working on a particular app, there may be certain functionalities that remain consistent but normally a project is unique. What is that key word? What does unique mean? That means it's not the same. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, seriously, family, because reason why it's not the same is that's what makes a project, that what makes it an actual project versus your ongoing and your your day-to-day -day, uh, work. And so that's why I love, especially for somebody like myself, especially like you who was watching this, because it seems like you must be a life learner. You must be somebody that is always looking to get better. And that's you. That's why I think there's so many people out there that could be amazing. Excuse me. I apologize. Exceptional project managers because of the fact that they are life learners. They are someone that's looking to attack the problem and not just complain, but find potential solutions to solve it. And that's what project management is all about. So these actual failures have allowed me to have the ability to grow just not in my as in, in my professional life as well as in my personal life. Now, point number two, the early days. I want to tell you about the foundation. Again, I, you know, it, it, when a house is built, the foundation is what is always built on. And what I learned in my early days as a project manager, there were certain things that I thought was going to happen uh, that didn't happen right away. And it, it frustrated me. I'll give you an example. I wanted to get my PMP right away, but I needed the, I needed the experience. You needed to have, uh, you know, I think at that time, it still is probably the same three or three or more years of a, of, of being a project manager and you had to, and it was just like, Oh, I want to get this. Cause this was the thing they were talking about. Then I was like, all right, well, I'll get the cap M and the journey through just even getting these certifications, it was a journey and, and I understand, I stated it earlier, there are programs out there that tell you, you can get it with, you know, if you complete this boot camp or if you, you know, study this book and, and some people have, have seen success that way. Um, and I'm not here to knock them. I'm just trying to be honest with you though, family, it depends on what you want. And if, if, if you really want to build a foundation as a project manager, you're going to have to go through some of these obstacles or I should say initial challenges because that's what they are. They're challenges to help you grow and to and it's up to you to overcome them. When you're watching channels like this, this get, these give you the tool set to overcome those challenges. Say, wait a minute, he's went through that. So I know I can get through that. He's been through that and I know he can do that because that's the whole reason. One of the reasons why. I started the channel was because I want to see more project managers out there. I want to be able to share some of, you know, share my wins, my losses, some of the disappointing factors and stakeholders and everything. So you get a holistic approach. I don't want to share always all the good stuff like, yeah, this is because then that's not fair to you who take their time out their day to watch the channel. So let's move on to point number three. Point number three is the midway struggles. What do you mean, ED? Listen, you're going, especially if you start getting really exceptional in the beginning of your project management career, you may be tasked with running complex projects. What are complex projects? There's so many vari uh, variations to that, but I'll just say at a high level, a complex project may be where you're leading a project and all of a sudden you start having a lot of resource constraints because resources have been moved 
to another priority or the, the project is so complex because you have environmental factors, e -E, uh, EEF, enterprise environmental factors, or there's, like, again, there's so many things that could happen while you're leading a particular project and how, it, how good or how well can you be adaptable? Mm. A lot of people can't be adaptable. A lot of people can't move. They're so stuck in their own ways. And when they get stuck in their own ways, they can't see outside themselves. They can't see how we can solve that particular problem. And that's a skill set as a project manager. You're not going to develop overnight. There's going to take some time for you to actually lead projects in order to develop that skill set and that mindset. I truly believe that leading a project is the majority of it is mindset. That's why you see me doing a lot of mindset stuff here um, and always recognize, recognize, I mean, recognize or recommending books around mindset, because I believe if you develop the mindset to continually to grow, to continue to learn from your failures, it gives you a better opportunity than someone that is constantly just stuck probably going to get in trouble for this, but oh well. Gets, that they're always constantly stuck and always, and always bringing up things that we've already solved, that we've already moved forward. One of, my, one of my cliches or one of the things I love to use is saying, you can either have a windshield view or you can have a rear view view. Remember, you can't have both. And the reason why I say that is the reason why I say you can't have both. Yes, you can look in the you can glance at the the rear view and look, but you got to make sure you're looking at the windshield in order to be able to drive. Yeah, if you want to just to look directly at the rear view and just drive the whole way through looking at the rear view, then I, I don't know what your odds are, but I guarantee you, you won't have success on driving to the point that you want to get to. So the point I'm making is, family, is that we have to be able to have the ability to be able to glance at the rear view, meaning look at the issues or look at the tr uh, trials and tribulations we went through as far as leading a project, but using the windshield to continue to move forward, to do what? To move forward. And being able to, family, one of the things in, the, in, in my, mid, I say my, my midway uh, struggles was keeping a balanced life. Now, this is where sometimes for somebody like me, it's, it's challenging having a balance like, oh, personal and professional because of the fact of I'll pour so much into uh, my professional aspect that I'll, I'll sometimes forget about my personal life because I'm really so focused and locked in on that. So there's there's opportunity to have balance and some and you have to take advantage of that when it when it's necessary. But again, it depends on who you are as an individual. Point number four. I call it my tool belt or tools of the trade. It's, and a lot of times, you know, most people will, will talk about the different softwares. Well, what about Smartsheets and Asana and uh, Microsoft Project Listener? Those are all amazing tools, but you have to have the ability to navigate through all of those tools. You never know what organization you're going to be working in that may not use Microsoft Project, but may use Smart uh, Smartsheets, or they may use Monday.com and they may not use uh, Smartsheets or Microsoft Project. So having the ability to understand these these tools, like I'm constantly doing research and my homework on new tools or even existing tools, and and if I'm able to buy a, a course on Udemy or or go to YouTube, I call it YouTube University, uh, I do it because of the fact of you never know if you're looking for an opportunity and this organization doesn't use Microsoft Project or use Smartsheets and, or Monday.com or any of these, or, or Jira, or some people call it Jira, depending on where you're from, and all they use is a simple Excel sheet. Can you adapt? And so being able to have a combination of all of those experiences really sets you up for success. You don't need to be an expert at those. That's Again, that's subjective. That's my opinion. And the reason why I say you don't need to be an expert, because it gives you an opportunity to, if you're not an expert and you have a good enough level of how to manage a, a, a project schedule, you'll be able to check, take, take the, the, the foundation is going to be there. The, I don't care what, it, what tool it is, there's always a foundational principle when you're building a, a project schedule. And when you understand that foundation, then you, you'll definitely be able to jump from tool to tool. And if you want me to do a video on, that, on those foundations, leave a comment about, you know, hey, what are you talking about, E.D., the foundations of a project schedule? Let's move on to point number five. This is my favorite. Um, I actually wrote a book um, 
it's called the magnetic project manager and one of the chapters really talks about this point here the power of relationships beyond hierarchies you know there's a lot of organizations that i've i've been a part of and um, i've heard from other project managers where the best the best project environments to, to lead projects in where there's not a hierarchy okay you, what do you mean you need to have some type of leader yes i i get that but when i'm saying a hierarchy as far as oh everything needs to come through me or hey i need you to run this by me before you leave no no we're going to empower you to make the right we're going to empower you to make the decisions and if the decision is wrong we're still going to have your back as long as it's not uneth unethical we have your back because if you're on a career trajectory career trajectory your leader should want you to make those decisions because if you make those decisions the more you get empowered when you, the more you get empowered the more confidence that you have and then they'll feel comfortable like hey well hey we need to assign another project uh, and that may be different and things of that nature but when there's hierarchy where when I'm talking about project related hierarchy then and manager says oh I need everything to run through me then they might as well lead the project because a purpose of a project manager is to lead I know it says manager in the title or in, in the title of what you do but you are a project leader a leader inspires a leader makes decisions a leader works with their stakeholders uh, ie maybe their team to say hey this is what I'm thinking this is the decision I'm thinking of making poke holes at it and tell me why it will work and tell me why it won't work that's what a leader does and you know what else a leader does they practice active listening so when they throw it out there to the team they listen to everything before making a informed decision and when they have enough information to make an informed decision they make the decision and move forward so again I know I probably went on a tangent about that, like, oh, I can tell you've experienced that. Yes, I have. And when you experience it, it takes the fun out of leading a project because now you feel that you've been reduced to someone that doesn't add value, that doesn't provide value. That's why in, in my video, I may even link it to this one where I talked about tolerated and being celebrated because there's a difference. I want to go where I'm celebrated. I don't want to be anywhere where I'm tolerated because when I'm tolerated, they're just using me until they can get by. Mm, I may, did I say that out loud? Yes, I did. When I'm celebrated, they're they're not just they're not. I, oh wait, let me remix that. Uh, when I'm when I'm being tolerated, I'm being misused. But when I'm celebrated, I am being used effectively. I hope you like that because what I'm basically saying family is is that when you are working in an environment that celebrates you they want to use you to say hey this is my person this is who you need to talk to don't come to me he's the, he or she is the project manager I'm not the project manager I need you to work with them they will make the decision and if if it if the decision is a a point where they need to involve me they know how to involve me but I've empowered them that's an organization, that's a department that you want to be a part of because if it doesn't, it's going to be a, a micromanager and I can't, I can't speak for you family, but I've never done micromanage well. I've never succeeded in micromanagement because of the fact I already know what comes actually with that. So again, family, understanding the value of relationship, I kind of went on a tangent there, but the whole point I'm trying to make family is working in a, uh, the power of relationships and beyond hierarchies it really creates an effective role of being able to communicate and trust each other. Point number six, you know, um, when I was lead, as I as I lead projects, I always have these aha moments. You know, every project manager has that aha moment. It's like the parallel between uh, project hurdles as well as the growth within uh, the project, meaning that you'll, you'll have an opportunity and you may have a difficult stakeholder, like you guys are constantly bumping heads, but then eventually you, ha you, you get a breakthrough and then that, that stakeholder is like your number one advocate. Like they're like, no, I believe in this person, but they just didn't, they've been let down so many times or uh, someone has backstabbed them or the trust wasn't built there. And so they were just being a difficult stakeholder. And I made a video on that as well too, family. You need to go check it out. But seriously, I, when you have those aha moments and it happens to be on every pro not every project, but I've had it on a majority of projects where you'll have that difficult stakeholder, but then you have that breakthrough. And when you have that breakthrough, it's just an amazing, beautiful thing. 
let me go on to point number seven, the current horizon. You know, as project management uh, really kind of evolves, um, being able to continually to develop yourself, have insights into where project management is going. One of the things that I'm focusing on more and more and getting my hands on is machine learning. I, uh, I was going to say, i.e. Uh, AI. Really, I'm learning as much as I can about AI um, because I'm seeing where projects are, are eventually going from like a scheduling standpoint, from all the different artifacts that you can create. Even creating PowerPoints, you'd be shocked. So one of the things I'm doing with my, my project manager mentor is we are, we are every Saturday, we're doing deep dives around AI. Hey, what are the new tools out? How do we, how do we maximize these tools to actually improve how we're delivering different things uh, of that nature around the project management space? All right, family, last and final point. I know this was a, I hope you guys watch, this is some good, this is some good stuff. And I'm not saying it because I'm doing it. It's just the whole point of, if you really take the time to unpack this content, I promise you, you'll be shocked when you look back year, uh, years later or years forward, you'll be like, wow, man, he was talking about this. So last and, last and final point, as we look ahead and the journey continues, I do want to say that when you're, and when you're in project management, there's a true opportunity for self-discovery that this is never ending. This is an ongoing thing. You're going you're gonna to find out different ways how to get better with your communication, how to get, and when I say communication, I'm looking at verbal as well as nonverbal, as well as written. Um, these are the three aspects that I look at to really develop me as a project manager uh, to get better. How do I get more concise with my with my uh, communication when I'm reporting all the way up to C-suite, all the way down to just our stake uh, our stakeholders. How can I be more effective? So you start asking yourself these type of questions and getting that feedback because you're seeing when you don't have to ask, hey, how's my communication? You could tell if somebody doesn't understand what you've communicated to them, and you could put it as plain as day. But if it, the the receiver is not understanding the message, then it doesn't make sense. Another thing is uh, I really truly believe the craft of project management, you're going to have to start creating a personal brand. That is why another reason why I started, I don't know why I took my hand way over here, but the, that's another reason why I started these videos uh, because I wanted to get the message out. I understand the importance of creating a personal brand around this and really just pouring into people uh, who are looking to either get into this craft or currently in, in this craft of project management and really un want to understand, hey, is this worth sticking with? And I'm going to tell you, uh, and maybe this is subjective because subjective because I love it, but yes, it is worth sticking with, uh, but it's up to you to constantly get better, find new, find new challenges and new certifications and new ways of doing things. Don't get caught up in the dogma of doing things the same way they've been done just because of the results, because of some of the results that you've seen you got. It was like, oh yeah, this will work. So I challenge you with that. Um, with that being said, family, I know I really talked your ear off, but I'm really super excited about what project management has done for me. And I'm hoping um, and praying that it, it will wake someone up that is thinking about getting in this thing that I love, that I hope you will love called project management. If you don't know my slogan by now, I'll just say it this way. I'm out. <laughs>